Rocks are really interesting. Uh, my brother's even more keen on studying and finding rocks than I am. Um, he's got a, a loft just full of things he's found. So I thought we'd look at rocks today because they can tell us a lot of things. You know, this this beautiful sparkly uh, quartz that I found in the uh, the Lake District and, and brought home and has been residing in my garden ever since. Um, it's, you know, it can tell us a lot of things. It can tell us about, you know, how old the uh, it is. It can tell us a lot about the landscape in which it was found. And um, so they, they, they do tell us a lot about the history. And, um, you know, I was... Uh, reading the book of Joshua this uh, this month and at the beginning of the book of Joshua just after the Israelites have crossed over the river Jordan um, to remind future generations of that amazing miracle they got 12 stones from the river Jordan and, and set them up as a, as a memorial to remind people as a way of remembrance and uh, you know so at future generations would look at these stones and say why are they there oh it's to remind you of the time that you know the Lord did a great miracle in our sight and held up the River Jordan so we could cross through on dry land into the Promised Land, and uh, you know we see lots of memorial stones used uh, in, in the Old Testament, but then you get to the the end of the Book of Joshua, and uh, there's a different kind of stone that it sets up. It's not a memorial stone, um, you know, like like what uh, they've been using all the way through Joshua, and we we even use memorial stones, don't we? If you go down to Kidlove. Uh, in just that state, you'll see a stone there that's uh, set up as a memorial with inscription on, reminding us of the time that the the miners uh, died as a uh, as a rem uh, in remembrance of the miners of the pit disaster in Goulburn uh, mine. Uh, but at the end of the book, it's it's not a stone of memorial; it's a stone of testimony that uh, Joshua sets up, and it's just after he's uh, he's said to all the people, you know, you decide who you're going to serve. But well, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And um, all the people say, yeah, we will we will serve the Lord too. So he says, right, well, this is what he says in Joshua chapter 24, verse uh, 26. And he took a large stone and set it up there. Um, and Joshua said to all the people, behold, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. You know, I like that because sound, all objects absorb sound, don't they? And rocks effectively. You know, absorb some sound. Um, so this idea that the, the, this rock that he sets up there has heard all the words that the Lord has spoke to them. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your God. You know, it, so this stone had also heard them all say, yeah, we're going to follow the Lord. Um, and, and it's great that this, this, the idea of this stone being a witness, you know, I thought was quite fascinating. And you may say, well, what do you mean there's a witness? You know, it's not like the stone could just start speaking. And, uh, well, anything's possible. And the interesting thing is, if you just fast forward to the New Testament, when Jesus is riding a donkey through Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, you know, and people are, you know, the Pharisees and religious leaders are saying, oh, just tell the people to stop shouting Hosanna to Jesus. You know, we're going to get in trouble with the Romans. And uh, Jesus says, look, <laughs> if the people stop crying out, the rocks themselves will cry out. You know, and it's just a lovely picture, isn't it? And a lovely reminder of, uh, of uh, the testimony of rocks.